And Mahabharat when the first came, I was not allowed to watch because she said, you know, first you read the epics. Your first exposure to these epics should not be, you know, somebody else's imagination. It has to be first your own imagination. I, I actually like a little bit of self-doubt in people. Like, I mean, I'm, you know, very overconfident, toxic positivity. It's not something I can even really relate to. From my work, the only thing that's really me is death in the gunch, I feel like that's the thing that's really me, I feel. From my own part, I can say like as an actor also and as a director also, there's a lot of pressure to cast uh, big stars. Konkana, it's so lovely to have you on Now Binging. Thank you. Uh, I'm so happy to be here. This is our sort of signature show where we celebrate streaming. And mm -hmm. I feel like you are a full-on streaming star. <laughs> Aren't we all <laughs> nowadays? Because otherwise it's theatrical. <laughs> no, but, but Konkana, look at the work you've done. Okay. Dolly Kitty, Wo Chamakte Sitare, mm. Mumbai Diaries. Gili Puchi, which was my favorite Hindi film of that year. Yeah. Above all features released yeah. in that year. <laughs> and now The Mirror with Lust Stories too. Uh, it's just such a solid body of work. And, and I have to tell you, so the first uh, guest we had on the show was Manoj Bach. I watched that show. Did I you? adore Manoj. I'm so happy that, uh, you know, finally Manoj and I have worked together. That's Both right. of us you have, have been in the industry for so many years. And we've just worked together. How exciting. Also for streaming. Also for streaming. Yes. <laughs> so, Ram Gopal Varma said about Manoj that God made Manoj for OTT. <laughs> okay. Yeah, exactly. And I was thinking like, is that also true for you? Because I feel like as an artist, your first instinct is towards material which is more complicated, which is more thorny uh, and which honestly OTT allows for more than theatrical. That's true. I mean, also, you know, it is what it is now. A few years back, it was all multiplex, multiplex, multiplex. Yeah. And, you know, and then, you know, before that, of course, it was all studios and or whatever. And then new, new things will also come. But yeah, right now it is streaming and it is all about the series. You know, I have to say that I'm quite, uh, um, I'm okay with wherever the films come out, you know. Like, I just feel like, you know, we're here to communicate some ideas. So whatever, however those ideas are communicated, it's okay for me. Like I don't, I personally as a viewer, I love watching stuff on the big screen. But it's not like I have ki, you know, my films uh, or my shows or anything has to be watched like, you know, that it has to be on the big screen or anything. I love watching on the big screen. I'm always happy to go to have that big screen experience. But as well, I have to say that I really, I really enjoy watching things on my own, you know, with the screen. So whether it's on a flight or whether it's on my laptop, uh, you know, or even on TV, I mean, I love it because I find it a very intimate, individual, intense experience. It's just me in the screen and like, I love it midair. Like, you know, I, like, I, I think something happens to that low pressure or whatever situation and emotions are a little heightened, taste buds are a little dull. <laughs> There's nothing else. It's only, you know, what you're watching and it makes for a really uh, intense experience, I find. That's so funny. I've never thought about that. Yeah, Is yeah. the on-air experience even... I think it's something to do with the pressure. <laughs> So, Konkana, here's what fascinates me about you. Uh, you've always said that I'm an accidental actor. Mm. Of course, you grew up on sets. You also did films as a child because of your mom, your grandfather. Yeah. But it was not some burning desire. No. You know, how a lot of actresses say that this is all they've ever wanted to do. It, that wasn't not the case for you. You said, in fact, I, I thought I'll do two, three films and then figure out what I really want to do. Yeah, yeah, I thought publishing, advertising, you know, whatever any respectable BA honours person does, <laughs> these kind of things. Back in the day, yeah, right? Yeah, back in the day. And then you become an actor hmm. and you become one of the finest actors we've ever had. Your second film wins you a national award, Mr. and Mrs. Iyer. 2016, you become a director hmm. and again you say, I'm terrified, I, <laughs> I'm going to be caught, everybody will figure out I don't have technical knowledge, I don't understand lensing and then you make one of the finest films of the year. You've always been so sweet about Ganja, I'm so happy. Yeah. 
but what is the secret sauce here is there some jedi booty aparna <laughs> fed you like you so. must yeah, be i think you know what she did was she i must have mentioned this before but you know she never let me watch um the mainstream hindi and bengali films of the 80s and 90s mm. i mean of course you know a few slip by and i watched a few here and there the mr india that we all adored and you know like of masoom and whatever some films though of course one has watched but i remember not just that i remember when you know remember when bold and beautiful and all came santa baba <laughs> there was a big craze so i was not allowed to watch the soaps the soaps i was not allowed to watch then uh, ramayan Ma and mahabharat when they first came i was not allowed to watch because she said you know first you read the epics your first exposure to these epics should not be you know somebody else's imagination it has to be first your own imagination of course i never read the full thing of the ramayan yet mahabharat i still have but ramayan i have only read in bits and uh, now thanks to my son you know um i've done but i think you know what happened is that because i wasn't uh and i was we were watching a lot of world cinema we were lot watching a lot of regional cinema so and you know even with books i remember when you go through a phase as a child of you know i'm reading in it black and i'm only reading in it black one day she said no bas ho gaya ye you have to now move on from this so at that time what an obedient child you did it i was like yeah, i was like oh, okay yeah okay let's watch you know try something else what something else whatever and i think that may have helped to a certain extent in terms of expanding the world view expanding the horizons seeing different kinds of you know being open to different kinds of narratives and art forms or whatever so that may have helped but but that's still just a palette right talent yeah. kidhar se aaya <laughs> craft kahan se aayi i mean how do you say that i don't know and then make a death in the ganj or do the performance that you delivered in mr and mrs ayer you know ye sab to i mean pata nahi like uh, ho gaya you know and bar bar hoga ki nahi you don't know you know mostly it's always i i i i think like in real life also and uh, i i feel like i have to be myself i you know i have to be, try and be as honest and as truthful in the situation maybe that has something to do with it that i am also not uh, mostly trying to please anybody else i'm mostly just trying to see if oh if i am excited by an idea or you know my hods and me my actors and you know me like i'm what am i excited by what am i trying to communicate i think whether it's films books or any kind of artistic expression it's really just what it is to live what are different experiences are of living this weird human life that we're living um so it's i think maybe you know just that communication of ideas and it doesn't always work and sometimes i think i'm communicating this something else is getting communicated that also happens but maybe it lands nearby so so the fact that you don't seek external validation in the way that most people in showbiz do i don't know about others but i don't think i seek external validation i think that very early on was wiped you know as a kid i was a very bad student and i think i i became a very good student but only in class 9 10 11 12 college and things so like till class 7 or 8 when you've been a terrible student na i think you don't seek external validation because you're like okay you know this is what it is i mean you know i i mean that's part of it and really? also the fact that um i mean my like my upbringing because my mother was always you know gave so much respect to you know to me <laughs> i'm a kid and the the way she conducted her life the way she brought me up i was always given a certain space and um i don't know agency of my own so maybe that helped me to and i always read a lot i had a very rich inner world so maybe then that's why i didn't uh, so agar mil gaya mil gaya nahi mila to nahi mila you're not hungry in the best way possible hopefully and let's see how long it lasts you know these things you never know i feel like i don't know how much of it is in our control life itself my personality also i mean it's not like i'm this or this or that i don't know i feel like it's you're like many a, things yeah it's many things it's changing it's kind of fluid it's sleeping out in this direction is leaking in that direction we just don't know <laughs> you know the other thing that fascinates me kongna is you are also a nepo baby right i'm a nepo baby of sorts yeah yeah i mean your mom is a movie legend okay uh, and yet no matter how shrill the conversation around nepo babies got your name i have never seen flung around in that list yeah but i said then feel guilty on my own little bit sometimes cuz that's 
just who you are. That's just who I am. But also that, you know what, I think maybe it didn't get called up because, um, so it was never part of the Bombay mainstream um, industry, you know, like that. She, she my mom had done, Aparna Sen has done some Hindi films, but not too many. Um, but and and she was so uh, well known in being the bingo as an actor. I'm saying not as a director, but as an actor. Yeah, she was uh, you know like a big commercial star. But I never really did that in Bengali films myself or in Hindi films. So again, I feel like I'm a never baby in the best sense because you know what has happened is I have been around film sets since I was a kid, and I've not just been around film sets. I've also watched my mum editing, dubbing, mixing doing budgets, having, you know, pre-production meetings and all that. It's a very familiar world. But it's not like she had uh, any networks or connections like that in Bombay as such, you know. I mean, it's always lovely to uh, be extended the respect that was accorded to her. That's just, I'm lucky. <laughs> yeah. But it might also be Konkana because you're so talented. I think talent also, you know, it speaks for itself, right? Yeah, and it's very subjective, you know, I mean, it's, it's, there, there are all kinds of, you know, talents and some people like this and some people like that. And it's so nice to have a wide variety Absolutely. of things happening so that people can also pick and choose and we're not just stuck with one kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. There's no one type of movie anymore. And that's a fantastic thing. Yeah. Um, look at, look at your body of work. So one of the films that's my favorites is Zoya's Luck by Chance. Me too. I just love that yeah. film. And one of my favorite scenes in that film is when you as Sona are saying to that producer um, that you should be given work because you have talent. And he says, like, wo kise chahiye? Right? It just, I've never forgotten that. It's yeah. so heartbreaking. What uh, a script that was. What, what a, a film that is. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was just fabulous. But I want to ask you, and the truth is that was true of the Hindi film industry for many, many years, hmm. right? Do you feel that it's changed now? Do you feel that in 2023, talent is a major priority? For whom? For producers, for the, for the gatekeepers. I don't think so. Still not? I don't think so. Why do you say that? Because, uh, you know, um, talent, of course, uh, talent, of course, but I think even more than talent, um, people who are putting in money, uh, want stars and I mean why not I can understand they are putting money and they want to obviously cover their bases and I understand and many stars are very talented and perhaps some aren't as much but I think that um, even for OTTs there's definitely a move towards stars really yeah it 100%. is a star system is setting in yeah there's a lot of pressure to take stars from my own part, I can see, like as an actor also and as a director also, there's a lot of pressure to um, cast uh, big stars. Ah, oh. but, okay, so... Am so I the only one who's saying this? I hope other people are also <laughs> saying this and agreeing. <laughs> no, because I asked this because Karan was saying that now, sure, maybe, maybe stars are still a requirement. But what he said to me was that, you can't just be a star. You also have to have the talent. Yeah. You think that has changed? Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Maybe that is possibly true. And that's the best combination, isn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Best so, and, and rare. I mean, it's not, you it's know, not it's everywhere. not everywhere. No, no. Yeah. It's, I, I wish it was, <laughs> yeah. but it's definitely not yeah. everywhere. Uh, you know, I was reading this interview of yours where you were talking about how when you were younger, you would be judgmental of your characters. Of my characters, yeah. You said that... Um, if I didn't approve of their behavior, I wouldn't have sympathy. Yeah. Did this change? <laughs> it's changed. It's changed, I have to say, because I remember my mom actually pointing it out to me because I was always like, oh, why is she behaving like this? Why does she have more dignity? And who cares, you know? Like I had this slight attitude of sometimes about some characters, you know? And uh, I remember my mother saying, saying to me, but you know, uh, this girl doesn't have any other weapons. She doesn't have uh, whatever it is, you know, she, this, this, she feels she has to behave a certain way and, uh, and that really helped, that really helped. So uh, now also I'm getting, you know, I have to say thanks again to streaming to a certain extent that one is getting interesting roles also. Yeah. There are those, those good things have also happened. You know, like roles like in Dolly Kitty, Dolly is no strange character, lying, cheating, stealing, um, kind of a woman, not always a great mother. Fantastic. I love the way Alankrita portrays uh, women. Um, 
and even like you know gilly puchi how and when would that have happened also the fact that you know format wise we have a lot of uh, you know you can do a short film you can do documentary docu series i don't know reality yeah. short mini series films all of that that is also um, great and i think as far as i know series don't need censorship hmm. films i think even on ott need censorship yeah exactly yeah. yeah but tell me about this empathy with your characters huh. does that show in your performance when you are judging your characters probably it will come through you know because the thing is uh, the aim is now i think to try and connect like i, I, I said this before but i really feel like you know we have everything already within us like all the emotions and all the feelings everything is already within us and at different points in the day or in our life or you know different elements of ourselves come out and when you get a character you have to do the venn diagram and find the overlap you know uh, and sometimes it's useful also to find a real person as an approximation that also helps me say ah this one is like my cousin or something you know like that sometimes helps me the other thing i do to try to connect to my characters i without knowing it i've actually caught myself doing this i didn't know i was doing it that i've started behaving like my character in my real life really yeah so i mean for example if i'm largely an angry person i have also in my real life become slightly you know like things which may not have bothered me i've let it bother me or you know if i feel i, I you know if in, in a character i have to confess something to somebody in my real life also i'm like you know and i can't even almost help it i have in my real life also you know maybe done some kind of a confession which i may not have you know it's a very risky business <laughs> <laughs> i was just going to say yeah. doesn't this get playing me? with your life <laughs> really tricky <laughs> i think it can it's a good thing that i caught myself doing it you know because then you're like are you sure <laughs> is this worth it <laughs> so do it's you fun taking some risks and living little on the edge like that but you mean you're going through the day and then you stop and say to yourself am i being so and so or am i being myself no you know i realize this when like for example i had to do a scene where, where i'm distraught and anguished maybe for other reasons but as i'm leading up to that scene one or two days before maybe it's somewhere on my mind and i found myself kind of inviting the anguish in my life instead of what i would normally do is let's take a moment and do some deep breathing and calm down or you know whatever it is you know whatever your coping mechanisms are but i found myself you know because i have to go do this you know let me anyway do this beforehand a little and then just cheat and transplant so just prep me for that yeah i caught myself doing this that's one so it's not like funny. i planned it it is it's weird it's so interesting <laughs> and you're able to kind of see yourself in third person and say konkana you're doing this now uh i think in the last few years maybe to a certain extent also you know nowadays with all that mindfulness and all the insta nuggets you're getting all the time of identify the emotion i don't know but this is something i've noticed in the last few years only so it could be a factor of just age and just mellowing or just being more self aware nowadays sometimes if i have a negative emotion i am trying to train myself a little bit ki oh i am feeling this you know to look at it like that it's a helpful thing what about becoming a director has that helped you to be a better actor i think uh, to a certain extent it did because you know uh, uh, when you're acting it's also much more um, i mean it's more insular in that sense no and as a director you have a more macro view of the whole setup and in that sense i also realized that uh, you know anybody's performance is such a collaboration of everybody i mean from uh, hair makeup wardrobe to like the of course the director the you know people who are lighting you the camera work everything editing you know if you just take out all the bad bits and the good bits are left then naturally it will be you know or you or the opposite you can really create that performance so that i saw not that i was ever a tantrum throwing late arriving actor but in that sense i became i think a little more sympathetic also to my directors to delays <laughs> and things like that a little more understanding yeah you know you as an actor played such a variety of roles uh, in in the monsoon date you were a trans character uh, in gili puchi you're a queer dalit hmm. woman there's so much conversation now and very very heated very polarized conversation about who gets to play who what is your sense of this like should 
only a certain type of actor play a certain type of character? And does that become too prescriptive? Because I can't get my head around it. It's tough and it's not like I also know exactly. We're also just all of us figuring out and yeah. learning. Um, you know, I think it would be ideal if we could, you know, um, have a bank of trans actors as well to choose from. Uh, but, I mean, of course, it's not happened yet and, and it should and it will, I'm sure. It will. Uh, but having said that, you know, um, I remember Shohini Ghosh uh, had once uh, mentioned that, you know, uh, I will always choose skill over identity, just like I would for brain surgery. So if I was having brain surgery, I would take the person who is the most uh, skilled at it. So that is also a factor. Of course, there should be, you know, actors from uh, the queer community and, and, and the Dalit community and all communities, you know. Um, that we have to portray these characters. But of course, uh, one also has to apply the filter of skill. I mean, you can't just take somebody because they're from that community and they don't have the skill because it's not documentary. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, this is, this is a very, very complicated. But it's tricky terrain. It is. And uh, we are all learning and we're all exploring. We don't know exactly. <laughs> yeah. You know, um, there's so much of conversation on the internet after the mirror came out about how do we get Konkana to direct wow. more often? How do you we? started it? <laughs> okay, I remember. guilty as charged. No. I started that, it. No, that was so sweet. I loved it. Petition to get Konkana to direct more. How can we do it? <laughs> I um, how will that happen? You know, I have to say, I have the my favorite thing is just jamming with people. You know, whether it's for the writing or. You know, the world building. Yeah, the brainstorming with my actors, the world building with the cinematographer, with the production designer, you know, and, and, and of course, the first person is the writer that we are, you know, like always jamming and that's really the most fun for me, um, always. So, if somebody else was just taking care of the other <laughs> nitty gritties of life, <laughs> then maybe I could do more of that. That's, I think, one. But also, one has to be excited about an idea. So, for that one has to also be able to read more and watch more and and you know let things percolate and 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 uh, maybe be allowed to fail <laughs> and yeah so you think now there's too much expectation no i don't know about others but i just feel ki dupa to ho gaya theek thak ab pata nahi third time kya hoga <laughs> but i mean i've always been this kind of person in life yeah <laughs> little low on confidence yeah. I mean, is it that? Is it that? I just feel like, I mean, I, I, I actually like a little bit of self-doubt in people. Like, I mean, I, you know, very overconfident, toxic positivity. It's not something I can even really relate to, you know, hugely. Yeah, I like this. Uh, I, like, I like it when there's a little, uh, you know, a little doubt. I think it's nice and you can learn. Is there a burden, Konkana, to being perceived as really really smart can you ever be goofy or do people want you to be intelligent all the time <laughs> see uh, i don't know uh, what now what other people are thinking of me or what my what my i don't know image must be in other people's minds is none of my business you know you don't what, think about it no i mean i don't think i think about it and uh, I don't even know, you know, like I'm sometimes a little smart, I'm sometimes a little stupid about some things, I can be very funny, you know, sometimes I'm a little duh, I, you know, I, you know I'm, I'm allowed to be all of these things and I am all of these things. And I don't think that, you know, one really gets a, a sense of a full person from the roles they play at all. Like I feel like, uh, like uh, from my work, the only thing that's really me is death in the ganj, I feel like that's the thing that's really me, I feel, you know, like in terms of identity. Yeah. Yeah. What's next? Uh, so I have a couple, so nowadays it's all web series. Uh, so I have a couple of those coming out. Uh, there's a show called Mumbai Diaries, we're now doing season two. Fab. That's coming out soon on Amazon. And then we have um, Soup, I'm really excited to work with Abhishek Chaube and Manoj. Um, and Nasir sir and we're all uh, we're all in soup and that should come out on Netflix down the line I think uh, maybe later this year October November hopefully um, and then there's also my mom's film The Rapist uh, which is at Mami later this year and then after that hopefully we'll do 
you know, an OTT release or something. I'm, I'm excited about that. That film got under my skin. I spent I've so long. It. Yes, of course, I've seen it. It premiered at Busan. Yes, I'm so glad because, you know, the thing is nobody's seen it. Yeah. Right? So, you know, you can't even interact with people yeah. about it. Yeah. No, nice. it's, it's uh, again, very complex. Yeah. Very, very complicated yeah. film. And, <laughs> and just, I, I kept second guessing my own, like, my own feelings about what was happening. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. just, and I, I, I want to re watch it again just to kind of figure out like, what did I think then? What yeah. do I think now? It's one of those very layered pieces. Absolutely. When one read the script only, because you know, when you're reading something, especially about, you know, an issue like this, you're like, oh, but this angle, no, but what about that thing? And then you, as you read, you're like, oh, yeah, this has also, you know, been addressed or at least been talked of, you know, so in that sense, yeah, I mean, at this, it was such an ambitious uh, project. Yeah. But at the script level, I remember thinking that, oh, okay, yeah, let's do this. <laughs> well, and and before we go on to the next segment, just leaving you with the earlier petition, direct soon. I'm so happy, thank <laughs> you. Yes, I hope so, I hope so. Okay, moving on then to the binge list. What type of a binger are you? Can you go for a long time just watching or you're not that person? So firstly, I have to say that I don't watch as much as like say my friends, my peers, the way people are consuming. It's amazing. I'm yeah. not consuming at that rate, I have to say. But yes, once in a while there's a show which I will just, um, I'll finish it in two nights. Uh, so a uh, few shows I have, have happened like that for me, but I'll just finish it. Which ones? Um, what were the two night shows? Tabbar was one. I Fabulous. Loved Me I too. I loved Tabar. My God, I really got into it. I was so, I just believed everything. I was so into it. It was also slightly funny and very dark and like wonderful actors. I really enjoyed Tabar very much. Um, I enjoyed Fire by Fire a lot as well, though I didn't binge it so much because it was it's also a little, tough. yeah, it's a little It was a, a tough heavy. one, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But, and you know, they saved it for that last episode. Like a lot of it was all these different angles of things. Yeah. I, I, I loved it. Uh, loved Rajashree. Um, yeah. And um, what else? I loved Beef of late. I loved Beef. I was just so happy, uh, you know, to see that kind of rage on screen. You know, we rarely even see women just so angry. And, you know, sometimes I feel like that. <laughs> sometimes I have a rage. And, and I also love playing characters who are angry. You know, I feel like it's so uh, taboo in real life to just lose your shit. <laughs> so <laughs> it's great to do it, you know, via via. Uh, so I really enjoyed beef. White Lotus is also something I enjoy very much, that kind of world. Uh, so that also I must have, though, I don't know if the second season was as good as the first one because I really missed that hotel manager. Uh, yeah. And then I watch a lot of stand-up. I love watching stand-up. Really? Yeah. That's how I often will like, you know, relax at the end of, a, of the day. Like a lot of Seinfeld also. I find it very relaxing. Uh, Seinfeld, stand-up, a lot of Indian stand-up also. Um, Who are the Indian comics you like? Biswa, of course. Um, Zakir, uh, Abhishek Upamanyu, uh, Basi. There are many, there are many. I have a little list in case I forget. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I love watching stand-up. So, is that your preferred genre, stand-up? Uh, I'm or is there one that you just enjoy watching? Like are you See, a I crime have, person or a romantic? I'm genre agnostic completely. If something is well made and you can make out that some thought has gone into it, I don't care what the genre is. I'm a little scared of horror. I'm a little scared of the horror ones like alone at night. I'm, because what happens is the film may have finished. But then me and my mind, we have made sequels and you know, then everything. I'm very good at scaring myself and other people. Yeah, very good at scaring other people. Well, also. you had moments in Ganj which yeah. were very I scary. I want to make also, you know, I want to make a small little indie horror movie. I'm very excited, like subtly, subtle horror. It'll be I fantastic. <laughs> what are you watching right now and why? I'm not on a series right now. I'm not, I think the late, oh, but I will, I, I have to watch Succession. I have to watch Succession and Bear. Uh, because people have been talking a lot about it. So the other thing is, I, I, I feel always a little, uh, when there's a lot of hype around things. Like I never watched Game of Thrones. You know, I just couldn't. I thought I'll save it for an outdoor and then I just, I just couldn't. Also, fantasy is not my favorite genre. Um, and also then, you know, I don't feel the need to watch something when everybody's watching it because, you know, then it just feels like, you know, it's, wait, wait, you know, let the thing die down a little bit. So, um, let the hype go. Yeah, a little bit, little bit. That is there. Um, 
but I think I will watch uh, Succession because even though I'd seen enough of that world, I felt three seasons me I'd seen that world. I knew those, you know, what was happening. But again, I believe it's so well written that I'll have to watch it. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that'll be next now. Okay, what's a performance in a recent Indian show or film that's made you jealous? See, I love things that Tabu, Vidya, Shefali. I love those guys, those women, those them I love. Like I can watch, I can relate to a, a lot, I guess. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, is there an all-time favorite film? Uh, one yeah. of my all-time favorites is Day for Night. Nice. True Force. Yeah. It just, it's just like, I love it. I love the high, because like, it's a film about making films. Yeah. And, um, you know, in Jules Regime and in Day for Night, he has a very fast voiceover. And I love voiceovers like that, you know, just like a, like a really fast because you know, you're, it's like, you know, when you're, you see, you know, when you're reading, you're reading so fast and then you hear an article or you hear a podcast and you're like, hurry up, you know, because so many thoughts are coming in also in between. So, um, yeah. <laughs> okay, you've always said that mainstream Hindi cinema was, it was never your thing. It never appealed to you. But if, if. But there are a few, there huh? are a few here and there that I've loved. Like what? Hmm. See? Like, I loved Mehuna and Om Shanti Om After. I loved them. I loved, uh, of course, Mr. India I mentioned. I really liked Darlings, Beach Me. Huh? It was fab. Yeah, it was great. It yeah, was great. It was so much fun. I loved, uh, I loved Matko Dalt. Um, I loved Ishtia. I mean, there are many films that I've loved. There's enough films that I have loved also. <laughs> but, if there were circumstances, in which you had to do a mainstream Hindi film, which director would you choose? Sriram Raghavan. Nice. I want to see that film. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I love him. I'd love to work with him. And if somebody didn't know who you were and didn't know your work, and they said, like, what's the way into the filmography of Konkana? What's the first film you would recommend? Death in the Lunch. <laughs> nice. Yeah. That's a good, good decision. Okay. I mean, we want to get to as a sense of the person, yeah. I guess. Yeah. 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 And what's a recent character you've played or you've created that's really kind of uh, stayed with you? That was hard to shake off. Oh my God, it has to be Gigi Pucci's Bharti Mandal. Yeah. It has to be. <sighs> because nowhere else have I had a chance to kind of unleash my inner man. You know, that I have inside me. And I often say that even like, you know, being ladylike or being feminine is something that is learnt. Especially often in Hindi films, the way it's portrayed, you know, like which is, which, it's just on the edge of hyper femme, you know. So uh, like in real life, one is often quite neutral. Um, I am. And so I think that, uh, you know, I was able to be away with my body, which I'm not even in real life, you know. And also, you know, I saw it happening there. And then when Neeraj and I would talk about it, we sometimes spoke of, you know, a certain kind of man who is maybe wearing lungis, a certain kind of slightly older man who she would have seen, the uncles and the mamas or whatever. But a different man came out of me. And it's not like it was planned. But there was another man inside. You know, there was that person inside and who I've never even given the permission to come out, even in my regular life, really, as such. Was such I'd love a to do that again. Fantastic <laughs> performance, really. Thanks. And again, like, like, so much thanks to Neeraj yeah. for that. Neeraj and uh, uh, Samir Saxena, the writer, yeah. Yeah. and everybody else, and Aditi and everyone. Okay. And if a book has been made into a film, it's always the book for you first because of mum's training? There are very rare exceptions. Like what? Clockwork Orange at par. There are a couple of. Uh, where the films have come close. But you always prefer book first? No, nothing like that. No? No, no. You can watch the film. You know, it depends. How well, how good are the reviews? See, I always go by the reviews. I really go by the reviews of films, books, not just of reviews from certain sources that I um, trust, but also certain friends and colleagues that I trust. So if somebody says, oh my God, but you must read the book, then I'll read the book. It doesn't matter whether it's before or after. I just want to recommend that book tomorrow, tomorrow and tomorrow. I've just suddenly remember what a fantastic book that is. Really? Yeah, about the gaming universe. And it's a, what did I know about it? Nothing. As an art form, as a story of friendship, I mean, it will become a movie just now. They're probably making it already. And 
who's your do you are you into superheroes is there a favorite superhero hey, across the spider verse what have fantastic. they done yeah fantastic even into the spider verse was very good yeah so my son is watching a lot of superhero and is he is he uh, sort of inducting you into the fold you know he tries he tries he sometimes sometimes tries to quiz me on avengers and things like that and i love being deliberately obtuse to just show my disdain <laughs> No, I mean some of them are obviously good, but a lot of them I try to tell him that you know they're just making these again and again to make money. Yeah. That's why they're doing this: two, three, four, five prequels, equal whatever. I'll just know what's happening at least. Enjoy it and also watch other things as well because the kids. What are we making them watch? They are watching so much of these. So Spider Man, I have to say, is something that I used to love as a kid. Sunday morning they used to give. No, they used to show in that. the song and yeah, everything yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. i yeah we used to love that i used to watch like this so now that spider man has become like this i'm very happy i mean what they've done with that illustration yeah yeah that animation mid leap the styles are changing yeah. i was floored it's fantastic yeah tell me is there a superpower you want to have i'd like to be invisible <laughs> and do what <laughs> i can't imagine you sneaking around no but then you can observe also correct you know? because many times you are also having to be and perform <laughs> you know you are having to interact and you know be having to sometimes assume a certain persona when you you know say go for a screening you know hi <laughs> you know you have to do all of that also and i can and i've learned <laughs> so what are some other shows you've loved so recently i really binged on the diplomat My friend recommended it to me, and it was so much fun. Like I just, firstly, I love that uh, Kerry Washington, and uh, the husband's character was also so lovely and yummy. <laughs> I was really good fun. Uh, Diplomat was like like a really quick one. Uh, Bad Sisters was super fun because uh, Bad Sisters is on Apple TV. and it's about these five sisters one of them is married to a prick and right at the top the uh, that guy dies and his other sisters trying to kill him and they're botching it up every time they're not managing it's a very irish world so it's not a world you get to see a lot so that's also great fun um also severance which i found like that's also apple plus so whatever severance i love very interesting world of um you know the inni and the uh, the you know and the outer very so unnerving have, very unnerving yeah. i liked it very much uh the sense of claustrophobia how they are behaving uh you know and it's basically you know it's so relevant like how we are like we have to be a certain way in our work lives our public lives our private selves and what is at which cost i love that also and um uh white lotus i mentioned earlier yeah. i yeah. enjoyed that very much nice now konkana we're going to the last segment which is imagine this inspired by your film you hota to kya hota these are basically imaginary scenarios inspired by your body of work so would aisha and sid have lived happily ever after no i doubt it nahi na nahi yaar kaise ab ye bhi to sikha hai usne <laughs> that's what even i had my Just, doubts i don't know so convinced um i think you know they would have had a few years of a fun. few good years of you know fun and 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 you know they would have cut their teeth on each other and and then i think maybe i should have done better <laughs> yeah maybe the good looks would have worn off a little yeah, no maybe maybe yeah What what would be an alternative profession for Sona from Luck by Chance? You know she's very resourceful. She's yeah. very resourceful and very jugado. Do I really think that like I mean she made it in the world of TV but I think eventually matlab she would have made it in films also but but that streaming would have she would have killed it at streaming. I think Sona. Sona Mishra. <laughs> So yeah. now, so let's just transport been. her here. That's right. To today, that's and right. And she would have killed it. <laughs> I think so. I think so. Where would Shuttu be if he was still alive? Maybe he'd be sitting and writing a novel in like Finland or something. That would be a nice ending. Be lovely. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Okay, and what is Bharti Mandal doing right now? Oh God, I mean the stats are so sad. But uh, she. She is trying to live her best life, and she's helping others too. Yeah, I feel like she could have taken that factory over. Oh yeah. Hey na, what to? Like this, she could have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. By her. But would hai. she have given a been given a chance? I yeah, don't know. probably not. Probably <laughs> not. Um, uh, last question. Imagine if there was complete gender equality on a set. What would that set look like? You know, I think that it's so sad that it might have 
maybe it would have looked very much the same. Because I'm telling you that it's like sometimes, you know, from the outside it looks equal. Yeah. But it's just that many times women, it's like women are doing everything in high heels, you know. So they're doing everything with the baby at the back, you know. So what you're seeing is they're doing everything. But you don't know what all is going on in the background. So on the outside it looks the same. <sighs> but maybe they would be a little more relaxed <laughs> and have less to deal with. Yeah. yeah. That would be nice. Yeah. Well, we'll someday. Yeah. Yeah, I hope so. We'll get there. We'll <laughs> get there. Konkona, thank you so much. Thank you. And uh, cannot wait to see everything you do. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank, thank you. you. What's a recent character you've played or you've created that's really kind of uh, stayed with you? Oh my God, it has to be Gigi Pucci's Bharti Mondo. Yeah. It has to be. <sighs> because nowhere else have I had a chance to kind of unleash my inner man, <laughs> you know, that I have inside me. And I often say that even like, you know, being ladylike or being feminine is something that is learnt. Especially often in Hindi films, the way it's portrayed, you know, like which is, it's just on the edge of hyper femme, you know. So uh, like in real life, one is often quite neutral. Um, I am. And so I think that, uh, you know, I was able to be away with my body, which I'm not even in real life, you know. But there was another man inside and who I've never even given the permission to come out, even in my regular life, really, as such.